Support for the leadoff on WGLT and WGLT.org comes from the Central Illinois Regional Airport, where Florida beaches are one flight away. Featuring nonstop service on Allegiant Airlines to Tampa St. Pete and Orlando Sanford from Bloomington. Close, convenient, CIRA. More at CIRA.com. A Bloomington tattoo artist is helping some women recreate what cancer has taken. That's one of the things you need to know to start your day for Wednesday, November 13th. I'm Ryan Denham, and this is WGLT's The Leadoff. Now let's lead off with how the transgender community at Illinois State University is reacting to President-elect Donald Trump's pledges to restrict access to gender-affirming care. WGLT correspondent Braden Fulgerson reports. Donald Trump campaigned against transgender athletes competing in women's sports and funding gender-affirming care. Bree Byers with the ISU Queer Coalition says Trump used the issue to stoke fear in the Republican base. I think mostly it's just a fear of an unknown people because transgender people don't make up a lot of America. Not a whole lot of the average American personally knows a transgender person. Byers adds she plans to fast track their legal name change before the new administration puts in any transgender restrictions. And one Illinois lawmaker wants to see additional protections. State Representative Kelly Cassidy says she wants to prevent other states from using geolocation services to track people who are coming to Illinois for trans or reproductive rights care. They're not able to track people um, who are accessing um, facilities who provide gender affirming or reproductive health care. That's something that's being negotiated for two years. Um, and I think we're very close to a final product. Cassidy says there's not much they can do if the federal government enacts national bans. Federal law supersedes state law. For the leadoff, I'm Braden Fogerson. Here are some other stories we're following in the WGLT newsroom. Legislators invite students to a forum this Thursday at the University of Illinois about a bill that would overhaul higher education funding. That legislation would shift the burden of paying for public universities from students through tuition and fees to the state. Illinois' attorney general is launching a conviction integrity unit to investigate claims of innocence and remedy wrongful convictions. Those submitting claims of innocence must be currently serving time for the sentence they're seeking to reverse. And the Illinois Prairie Community Foundation has named Eric Rankin as its next executive director. You can find more on these stories at WGLT.org. Every so often on WGLT, we feature community servants and unsung heroes working to make Bloomington Normal a better place. It's a series we call More of That, Please. In this installment, you'll meet Illinois Tattoo Company founder Chad Ramsey, who offers a free service for women who've undergone a mastectomy following a cancer diagnosis. He uses his artistry to do nipple reconstruction, the process of using tattoo ink and shading to recreate what's been lost from surgery. In this audio postcard, Ramsey says it all started about seven or eight years ago. We were just getting ready to close for the day, and a lady walked in. She was crying. She was visibly upset, and she had just found out that she had cancer, and she felt the need to get a tattoo. Um... So I just, I ended up doing like a little cross on her and it was just really, uh, I mean, it was, it was pretty emotional, you know, like she was, like I said, she was upset. It sort of made me, you know, upset. So I did the tattoo and um, I didn't end up charging her for it. I just said, you know, hopefully it'll, this, you know, just get you through whatever it is you're, you know, you're gonna be going through. Maybe two years later, she came walking through the door and she was like, hey, I just want to say thanks for that because it really got me through it and it was difficult and it just sort of made me think like, man, these people, you know, they go through hell and then they're stuck with something that, you know, they're not necessarily happy with. Some people feel like they're missing part of their womanhood or they're disfigured in some way and, um, I just thought, man, you know, I can, I know I can do it. So um, I just started offering it. You know, I had people come in and asking for it. And now I have like um, a few clinics that uh, refer me to their uh, clients. So I, I don't do a ton of them. But I think it's, for some people, it's something that they'll, they either offer it in the hospital and, the, and it's like in a setting where the, 
whoever's performing it isn't really doing the best job or maybe doesn't have their best interests in mind. They're just sort of put, putting something on there. Whereas, you know, I'll sit down and um, really try and make it so it's as natural looking as possible. But so far it's been, it's been great. Oddly enough, I guess I sort of treat it like a portrait because most of them either have like, um, maybe, maybe they still have one, so I just match that one. Or they'll have an old photo or they'll bring in a photo of another set that they like. It's sort of really up to them. I mean, I've, I've had some too that don't necessarily do a nipple. They've done like uh, something like floral. Um, I mean, I've had a couple of them say, you know, they've had that for years and they were didn't really care to have it again and they wanted something cooler. So we just don't do a nipple necessarily, but it's definitely something that is not for um, artists with not so much um, experience. I mean, it, um, I mean, I've been tattooing for 27 years. I, I feel like um, I kind of know how the colors will heal, how they'll settle, the tones, and what, what the client would just expect once it's all said and done. If it's something that somebody is thinking of having done, um, they're more than welcome to, to contact me. I can send them photos of, of uh, healed tattoos, and I mean, they're welcome to listen to their doctor as far as the referrals go. I'm sure they have a whole list of options, uh, whether it be in in house or you know in a studio setting. But I feel like most people, like the last one I tattooed, I think she just felt a lot more comfortable not being in a doctor's office. Yeah. You know, like music's playing, everybody's laughing, sort of a yeah. different environment. It's not so uh, depressing. You know, if it's something that anybody is interested in, I'm happy to sit down and talk to them, talk about options and. If I can help you out, I'd be happy to. That was Chad Ramsey of Illinois Tattoo Company in downtown Bloomington. This audio postcard was produced by WGLT's Lindsay Jones. And if you have a suggestion for a community servant we should feature on more of that, please email us at news at WGLT.org. Support for more of that, please, comes from Onward Injury Law, providing legal services to personal injury clients in Bloomington Normal and Central Illinois. And that's it for today. I'm Ryan Denham. The show is produced by Rosalie Truback. You can subscribe to the Lead Off on the NPR app or wherever you get your podcasts.